what's up divas and what's up divas it's your girl april and it is time for real talk wednesday so as usual you guys know if you have a real talk situation that you would like to be featured here on my channel so that you can get my opinion along with my divas and divos opinions you can always send me an email at muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com and please make sure to put it in the subject line real talk and i'll be sure to get back to you with a video episode is also if you'd like to change the name of your characters in the video meaning if your name is really Lily you can always change it to something else so that way I don't have to it just makes it a lot easier for me so as for the hair that I'm actually rocking today this is actually hair by Team Sensational which is their Empress Lace Wig and it is the custom lace wig cap I do have a video up on that so make sure to check it out I love it it's so realistic but because I was helping my daughter put her things away in her new apartment I was putting her kitchen table together for her I decided to put on my turban that way I could stay cool and the hair um, could basically stay out of my face so I felt like it was a fashion statement for the day so yes get into this real talk the first one is a long one so I'm probably only gonna be able to do two today because this one is really really long um hey April first I want to start off by saying I love your videos keep doing your thing first I have to say thank you King so first off my name is King already name change so my situation I am in dire's need because I'm facing being disowned and excommunicated from my family and community let me tell you the whole story. So in June of this year, I came out to my crazy fanatic Muslim family that I am bisexual and that I want to leave the religion and let, and let me just say things haven't gone well. My plan at first was to tell them what's up and run away from home to my best friend. But they came to the airport to get me and tried to convince me to come back with them. And because I love them so much, I complied, which they later used against me. This then resulted in me basically being exercised and me being taken to the mosque so that the devil or whatever would leave my body. They called the imams to chant some Islamic holy words over me and then the next day made sure that I went to the same people so that I could debate about what the religion etc so that I would find the truth. Later on down the line they started to internalize my sexuality and were very hysterical and crazy about it. My mother even crying and telling me that she would disown me and anyone in my family who interacted with me. They started to blame my best friend of nine years for turning me and forced me to delete her completely from my social media, which at first I wasn't having. Later on, our relationship, or rather friendship, between my best friend and I fell apart because her true colors came out when I needed her. She wasn't a bad person. Our friendship just wasn't what was the best for me. Later on, this friendship naturally fell through and my parents took it as me being straight again, which was ridiculous. My parents and family are very emotionally manipulative telling me that they love me and they'll support me when in reality all they want is for me to be a Muslim and if I'm not they won't have anything to do with me. Like I said they are emotionally manipulative and be and by manipulating me and my father by, by and by manipulating me my father got his hands on my cell phone and opened it only to find pictures of me in small clothes or no clothes at all which I will admit were mistakes. He also found me dogging him out on how he raised me and calling him all types of names. He wasn't the best father and throughout my childhood he would beat me, take me to Islamic school where I would get beat some more, which he knew but didn't care. All around being a very negative and scary figure in my childhood. This sent him into depression which he happily used to manipulate me. Fast forward to present day. Now because I had cut ties with all my previous gay and LGBT friends, which I regret, they took it to me that I'm straight again, and I haven't really focused on it much. However, I still didn't make it clear to them that I wasn't a part of this religion, so that's why they spent their time on trying to fix, even taking me to a therapist who could turn me and cure me and my bisexuality. Previously, I had kept quiet about the subject and hoped that I would be university, and hoped I would be in university by the time shit would kick off. But yesterday they demanded an answer from me and I told them I wasn't having it with this Islamic stuff and they went off. My mother told me that I had a day to change my mind and my father called me up and told me to get ready to leave the house because I wasn't welcome. My mother kept crying and manipulating me emotionally, some more by saying that if I loved her I wouldn't do this. Fast forward to this very day, my father who was an abusive ass control freak who didn't show me any affection when I was a child 
called me up to tell me how I wouldn't be welcome in the house, how he would feel more love to a Muslim stranger than his son, who is, a, who is an atheist, which is me, and that no one would probably care about me anymore, as if he ever did. Previously, before yesterday's and today's events, he was, diff he was a different person than he used to be, saying that he loves me and showing me the affection that I wanted as a child. But that phone call showed me his true colors, and now I know I can't trust the motherfucker no more. Please help and give me some advice. I have no place to go, no place to stay for weeks until I get to my university. And if I fake it and tell them I'm a Muslim, only to take it back once I'm far away, it would kill my mother. I still care and I love her, even though she said all those things to me, and even though she's about to disown me. What should I do? These people clearly care about their cult more than they do about their children. I don't know what to do. Sorry for the long ass rant, but this is a long story that's been lasting for three months. And even this text ain't all of it. I don't know what to do. I would love some of your advice. Wow. So for that, I got to take a drink. This is, some, this is some really good Moscato. So I got really super cheap now. And I bought it in a box for 17 bucks. It lasts so much longer. If you guys want the name of it, just let me know. But it's really good. It's better than all the other ones I've ever had. Gosh. And I needed a drink for that. So poor King, he is about to go to college, to university, which is perfect, which is great. However, his sexual orientation is bisexual, so he likes both men and women. His family is Muslim, which they are totally against. And I think any religious family is totally against the gay community or bisexual community. I just think that they're all totally against it because of their religion. So basically, they want to disown him, and they want him to give him a, give them a straight answer. Basically, they want him to be straight and decide what he wants to do. But he doesn't want to comply with their rules, and he doesn't want to be a part of the nation of Islam because that's not what he's interested in. That's not what he believes in, and this is not what he wants. But he doesn't want his hurt. He doesn't want to hurt his mother by lying to her and telling her that he's straight and he's going to be fine, everything is okay. And so he goes to the university and just goes back to his normal way of living. He's also going to be excommunicated from the religion and the community and his family, disowned. So what should he do? And in the meantime, if he tells them the truth, he has nowhere to go, nowhere to stay for a few weeks before his university. So it's kind of hard. Um, to me, I'm going to say this is kind of a hard one because I would never lie to anyone about who I am or what I believe in. And I would never lie because I just find that this is big, fake, and phony. So, to me, when you're lying to somebody about something that you really believe in, and you're, you're going against what you believe in, then you're really lying to yourself. Like, it's, it's bad when you have to, like, lie to cover up stuff to make other people happy. You shouldn't have to do that in the real world. Lie about who you are and what you love and what you love being and who you love just to make other people happy. Because down the road, these people that you are lying to, they're going to be happy and fine regardless of what you decide to tell them. So if you tell them that you're straight, they're going to be happy about that. If you tell them that you're not straight, they're going to be mad temporarily, but then they're going to go back to living their lives and they're going to be happy and they're going to do what they normally do. So it's kind of like you're going against what you believe in just to appease and make somebody else happy, which really totally sucks. And I know we've probably all been there in life. It doesn't even have to be in our personal life. It could be at work. But either way, I'm pretty sure that we've all lied to people about our beliefs or things that we, we plan on doing or just etc. in general, just to get by. But King is having like this huge issue. First of all, taking him to get exercise, exorcist, exercise because they feel like the devil is in him. That's just outrageous, first of all. And I really don't know how I would feel about that. Me, personally, I probably wouldn't even took the initiative to go. I just wouldn't have went. Um, and I know my parents would have been totally against it, but I probably would not have went along with that. Um, but he's not interested in the Islamic community or the Islamic faith. And to each his own. I'm not going to say I'm a holy roller because I'm not. I just believe in what I believe in, okay? Certain things that Christians believe in, I just don't. And I'm not an atheist, and maybe I can be an atheist, but I do believe that there is a God. He may not be the God that everybody is praying to in their books, but I believe that there is a higher being. And I just believe that always you need to tell the truth. Sometimes you may have to tell a little white lie to get your ass out of some real shit. But if it's going to conflict with your heart and yourself as a true being, then why lie about it? 
Unfortunately, if he tells them the truth, he's going to be excommunicated. He's not going to be able to live in the home. He's going to have to find somewhere else to live. Now, I'm pretty sure that you have loads of friends in the community of gay or bisexual community that you can go to, King. Because sitting in a home and fronting, fronting for somebody just to make them happy is fronting. That's the main word. It's called fronting. Why front? Just be yourself. Now, I know it probably hurts because you don't want to be disowned by your family. But do you really honestly believe in your heart that they are going to disown you forever? For eternity? Okay? After a while, I'm pretty sure your parents will come to view, okay, this is our son and we love him no matter what. And you don't have to be a Muslim. You can be in your own religion. It's not a cult. Muslims are not a cult. But, yeah, they have beliefs that a lot of people don't believe in. And I'm not going to bash them because, I, like I said, I don't believe in everything that Christians say, Jehovah say, Muslims say, what have you. I don't believe in all of that. Um, but I do believe that there is... Um, a higher being but what I would suggest is to be honest because being honest is being honest with yourself and they are going to respect you a whole lot more if you were to stay in their home and lie and say yeah I'm straight I'm straight I'm good and go to the church or go to the mosque with them you're lying and in reality that's just going to make the situation even worse when you do go out to go to the university and they come to find out that you have came out the closet fully um, that's gonna hurt worse to them so the best thing, in my opinion, would be to be honest with them and say, listen, I, I love who I am and I love the company that I keep. They're not negative company. They're not disruptive. They're not, you know, criminals. It's just this is who I am and this is what I feel. And I apologize. You can apologize and tell them, you know, I do apologize for not believing in your faith, but I need to be my own person. Everybody needs to be their own person. Everybody needs to find who they are everybody needs to have their own faith some kids grow up being Jehovah Witnesses with their family members and a lot of them don't like it I have my kids my teenager kids who have friends that are Jehovah Witnesses and they constantly complain about it and I don't really think it has anything to do with like certain holidays not um, celebrated but it just has a lot to do with the religion in general and like sometimes when you force a kid to be into a religion that they are just not basically they're just not into it makes it harder and eventually they get out of that religion they grow into themselves and they find what they love you know like when my mother she's a baptist i'm a methodist and that was what i was baptized in doesn't mean that because i was baptized into that i was a baby i was christened into it doesn't mean that that's who i have to be and that's what i have to believe in that's just what my parents made me into as a child as a baby so i really didn't have much say so into it so well, like my grandfather, I used to have to go to church with him every single Sunday from 10 o'clock to 3.30. And it was like long overdrawn. It just, to me, some of the things that went on behind closed doors, behind the church, was a little bit too much for me. And I think that's a lot of the reasons why I don't go to church now. But I do believe in what I believe in. You know what I'm saying? So I have my own opinions and thoughts about things. But I will tell you this. There are a lot of people that are against the gay community. There are a lot of people that are against the LGBT community. There are a lot of people that are against the bisexual community. And with that being said, these people sometimes don't even know a lot about these type of communities because they don't interact with the people. Okay? So... Basically, they just stereotype them as, oh, they're gay, they love to kiss on other guys or other girls, that's just what they do, or it's always a freak nick. And it's really not about that, you know what I mean? And it's just sad to say that the world is just so stereotypical about a lot of things that they really don't have an idea about, you know? You just look at the person on the outside of their shell and you feel like this is who they are and this is how they are, and because this is what they like to do, they're just the devil, they're sinners. And yeah, in the Bible, it does say thou shalt this and thou shalt that, but this is a new era, and unfortunately, not a lot of people in this world are abiding by anything that the Bible says. And that doesn't have to do with just being sexual or what your sexual preference is. It has a lot to do with just everything in general. Child molestation, rape, murders, crime, children disrespecting their old elders and parents. There's a lot of different drugs. There's a lot of things in the Bible that people don't adhere to. So why would we just stick one thing, which is your sexual preference, and make a huge big deal about that when there are so many different other things? So in my opinion, like with me, 
I'm all the way honest. And I have a brother who is just straight gay. And when I say straight, not straight, he's gay. He doesn't, he's not bisexual. He just likes boys, guys. And that's his sexual preference. Now, did we disown him? No. My dad is fine with it. My my brother is fine with it. I'm fine with it. His mom is fine with it. It is what it is. We have our other issues with him because he's really a disrespectful ass, you know. He's psychotic or he's psycho. He thinks he's a psychic and he thinks he was possessed. And um, he has other issues besides um, besides those little bit of issues that I've dealt with. But none of them are being gay. I love him for who he is. He's gay. He's gay. That's fine. He's still a human being. So I really don't think that a lot of people should judge people because they're gay or bisexual. But I don't think that these people who are gay and bisexual should have to lie to anyone to prove their point and to be happy or to make that other per person happy. Here's the thing, King. What about you? What is your family going to do to make you happy? Because it doesn't seem like they're really doing too much at this point in time to make you happy and satisfied with your life. It seems to me that they're making you miserable by calling you all kinds of names and disowning you and basically just shunning you from everything and to make sure that nobody else wants to speak to you here's my thing if the other people in your life that your family is putting you in exile with and don't want them to speak to you then maybe it's a blessing in disguise that these other people are not going to speak to you because had they been a real human being and wanted to speak to you then they would accept you for who you are so those are the type of people that you don't need in your life and it's sad to say that sometimes family are those too you never want to disclude or just exclude anyone from your family or your life and it's hard especially when it's a family member but if they're making you miserable and they're judging you and they're bashing you and they're ridiculing you and they're just constantly just putting you down and saying things like I'm going to shun you and just basically going against what you believe in, then those are the type of people that you don't need in your life. Because for one, life is way too short, way too short to allow any negative interruption into it because it's too short you don't want to look back and ever feel like I should have did this and I shouldn't have went along with that and I should just have left them alone those are your mom that's your mom and that's your dad and by all means eventually eventually they will come around but until then you have to live for king you have to live for what you believe in and what you want to do and they may not be too happy with you now but I'm pretty sure when you finish your school and your education and you get on your feet and you're doing something with yourself they may put all your past behind you and what you feel in your heart is what you believe in they may overlook all of that and just love you for who you are and that is like the key thing love you for who you are so um and for yourself too. love yourself so here's my thing I wouldn't lie because it's just going to make it a whole lot easier. But what I would do is be honest and be truthful and tell them who I am and this is what I believe in. And that you're not going to be part of the faith, but you still want to be a part of the family. Let them know that you still want to be a part of their family and a part of their lives. And if they still feel as if they don't want to be a part of your life and they don't want to be in your life because of what you are and who you are and what you like, then you know what? This is something that you have to step away with. Family is family, right? True indeed. Some people say family is always going to be there for you. That's not so true. That's not so true. Family does not always be there for you. It's not always there for you. They'll kick your ass down to the curb in a heartbeat and think nothing of it. So my thing, be true to yourself. And find out before you come out and tell them, because you do have a few weeks left, what I would suggest you doing is to find somewhere to stay. Why don't you talk to your friends that you deal with and let them know your situation and let them see, you know, ask them, would it be all right if I stay with you until I go to my university? And it's only because of such and such a reason. If not, you can look in your community for shelters um, because they do. I'm not really sure with every city, but they do have shelters for like gay teens and things of that nature. They do have stuff like that. But I would first, I would reach out to my family or friends rather who are fine with who I am and, and tell them your situation and ask them, is it, you know, would it be possible for you to just stay in their dwelling until you go off to the university? 
because once you come out of who you really are your family is going to cease all knowledge of you and disown you but I wouldn't lie because that's going to bite you in the ass in the long run but I would have a talk with them and just still let them know you know I want to be a part of this family and I love you guys regardless I'm not a part of your religion but I don't disown you because you still want to be Muslims but I want to be a part of this family. So you, you let them know. You put your foot down and you let them know this is who you are and this is what you want to be. But it's up to them to decide whether they want to be in your life. And if they don't, well, you know what? You can still love them at a distance and you can pray for them and you can keep them in your heart. And then in time, they'll come around and maybe you can reach out to them in time once you've gotten settled in school. But I would never lie. I would be honest and just be true to myself because you don't want to make yourself miserable in the long run. So, let King know what you think about his situation. What would you guys do if that were yours? If that were you? Okay, so, this one here is very time sensitive. Hi April, I love your channel and I love you. I need your advice. You can call me Leah. Me and my boyfriend have been together for over five years. I'm about to be 24 and he is 25. We have a four year old child and are living together in our own apartment. We recently found out that we are pregnant again. I was upset when I found out because I do not want any more children. My boyfriend has not had a steady job since I met him. I always have been the breadwinner and I'm the one paying for everything while he's a stay-at-home dad. We've been struggling, we we have been struggling lately financially. I'm thinking about getting an abortion because I feel another baby is more pressure on me and more of a bur of a burden at this time than a blessing. Yes, my boyfriend can get a job, but he's had a few jobs before and they never last long. I'm taking college cl college classes and have plans of starting my own business. Is it wrong of me to put my is it wrong of me to put myself first and go for what I want instead of having this baby? Love Leah. Drink to that. So Leah is 24, her boyfriend is 25. They have a four-year-old child. They live in their own apartment. She has a job and she's the breadwinner. She goes to college. Her boyfriend is a stay-at-home dad. He doesn't have a job, and when he does have a job, it doesn't last. And she's pregnant again and she doesn't want to have another baby because she wants they are struggling financially and she just wants to get things done in life before she has another baby so she wants to know is it wrong of her to think of herself well let's see I'm not gonna say I'm pro um, anti-abortion and I'm or pro-life or and uh, I'm not gonna say I agree with abortions and I'm not gonna say I disagree with abortions I'm in the middle, you know what I'm saying? I'm in the middle because let's let's be honest here. I'm not gonna say everybody's had an abortion because everybody hasn't had an abortion. But I've had one. I've had one. Um, but I was 16 at the time, so I was not about to have a baby at 16. I was scared to tell my mother. So me and my boyfriend, we went to the clinic and got an abortion. And do I regret it? No, I don't regret it. Um, because I still ended up having a baby like two years later, but I don't regret it. Some things are just not meant to be. So it, and the reason why I say I'm in the middle with yes or no is because it all depends on the person's situation. A lot of people would say, oh, God always makes a way for stuff or God always makes a, ba a way for a baby and to take care of it and it's a blessing and you can have this person help you, you have family members help you. That may be true in some situations. It's not always true for everyone because you really don't know the person's situation. So that's the reason why I say I'm kind of in the middle because it depends on the situation. So I'm not going to say, yeah, go ahead and have one. And I'm not going to say, no, don't have one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you my pros and cons of it. Okay? So, and how I feel about the whole situation. If it were me and I was 24 um, and, you know, and I was struggling financially, I probably would keep it even though I was struggling financially because I've already been in that situation um, where I had a baby at 18 and I had another one at 20 and I wasn't financially ready either. But, um... Yeah, I 
was struggling hard. I had like a really huge hardship at that time, but I ended up having another baby anyway. Um, and you know, I didn't have the best of everything. Um, I didn't have a phone. Um, I don't remember if I had cable. I probably didn't have cable. But either way, I made a way. I didn't have cable. I didn't. But either way, I made a way for me and my child. Okay? So, you know, yeah, it was hard. I did get on public assistance. So they did give me food stamps. And they helped me with, like, my rent and things like that. But, you know, I was young. So, and I still was going through a hardship. But... I kept my baby and today to this day she's she's 19 she has her own baby she has her own apartment she has a job and yeah life is still hard for her I'm her mother so even though she is a grown-up and she's really not a grown-up I still help her with her new apartment I bought her, her living room set I bought her, her dining room set I bought her a bedroom set for her so and I gave her like little things that I had in my house like extra pots and pans and plates and stuff I gave her things like that but I made sure that I bought her furniture and a TV and all that good stuff well I had an extra TV so I didn't buy a brand new TV but I bought her area rug you know her dining room set meaning cable chairs you know all this stuff living room set a bedroom set so I made sure that she has stuff because I know as a youngster it's hard for her and she's struggling and I don't think if she had me it would probably be even a little bit more harder for her and nobody wants to go into a new apartment with just a bed that's just so lame you don't have anything but a bed but not everybody's family members are like that so what I do for my daughter I'm not saying that other people are gonna do for them meaning Leah like with my daughter, I watch her son for her every day whenever she goes to work, which is basically like five days out of the week. I watch him for her free of charge because that's my grandson and this is what I do to help her. And I do this because my mother never did it for me. She didn't do these things for me when I had my first baby. So I try to be there for her and help her with everything that I can because her situation was kind of like my situation at the same age group, you know. Um, but I didn't move out. Well, I did move out when I was 19. I did. I went to stay with a best friend, but I didn't have my own. But everybody's situation is totally different. So you really can't say that you're being selfish because you're thinking of yourself. You're not being selfish because you're thinking of the longevity of your future and your child's future. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, you have to think about what you want, Leah, and what's best for you. If you feel like your son, your child's father is not good at keeping jobs then maybe you want to pop a light bulb on in your head and have a real good sit down with him and let him know listen we can both be working parents and take care of this child together i don't feel like it's fair that i have to do all the work while you stay at home if he's not bringing in any income i'm pretty sure that you're paying for everything like you stated but he's also asking you for some of your money your hard-earned money to buy whatever he may want i'm not sure if he's a smoker but he may want new socks new underwears everybody always needs something regardless so if i were you i would really have a long long overdue conversation with him about his work habits his work ethics because if he can't keep a job, that's not a real good look. And he's 25 years old. And at a certain point in your life, they look at things like, hey, hmm. You don't want to be like, you, I don't know. When I see that you have so many jobs in your short lifespan, it's, I take that as you're not serious. You can't commit to something. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about you. So, I would have a long overdue conversation with him about his work ethics for one but for two if you are struggling financially and you don't feel like you can bear the burden of having a child and taking care of it financially then you have to do what's right for you 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 don't need to think about what other people think about oh leah had an abortion oh did you did you hear what leah just did you know you don't think about it like that. You think about what's best for you. Don't think about as this person said they're going to help me out and they're going to be there for me. People say stuff, but it's not written in stone. And they can tell you something until the moon is blue and you're blue in the face. Doesn't mean they're actually going to follow through with it. And whenever, whenever anyone tells me, hey, April, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do that for you. I don't really take it as that serious. I don't take it so serious because I'm not going to believe it until I see it. Never believe it until I see it. And that's just me because I've had my hopes up a lot about a lot of things with people trying to help me and do things for me and never fell through. 
So if someone's out there telling you, even your baby's father, oh yeah, I'm going to get a job, I'm going to take care of us, have this baby, girl, let those brain wheels start spinning and have a long conversation with him because this is your future. And if you're going to college and you're trying to do your own thing and better your lives for the long run, then you need to do what's the best for Leah. And some people aren't good with struggling financially. Some people just can't bear it. And some people aren't strong enough for it. Me, I can honestly tell you, I did not think that I was a strong enough individual to be able to deal with being broke all the time and having two kids and not having much to myself. I really didn't think, but I dealt with it. And I made it through and I was fine. You know what I'm saying? So here I am today and I'm living proof like, you know what? There are some things that you got to do in life just to make your life a lot easier, fruitful, and just progressive. So my reaction to an abortion, abortion, like I said, is neither here nor there, neither yes nor no. I'm all about what's good for the person and what situation. I'm never going to shun anyone or judge them because they had an abortion. I'm not going to judge them because they didn't have an abortion. I am biased to it all and I am supportive to it all. So my opinion and my my opinion is what's good for you? What's going to work for you? And it's probably going to be some people that's oh yeah, well, abortion is oh, I'm against abortion and blah 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 and blah blah blah. That's your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. You know what I'm saying? You're entitled and God always makes the way and this and that. You're entitled to your opinion and you're entitled to how you feel about whatever the topic, the subject at hand is. But you're not the person that's living her life. So therefore, what I say is do what's best for you as a person. Don't go along with something because somebody else is doing it. You do what's good for Leah and what feels good to for Leah and what's going to make it better for Leah and her child's life. Not for Leah, her child, and her baby father who doesn't have a job. That right there is another story, another real talk situation. You need to have him get a job, girlfriend. Because it doesn't matter if you're going to school and he's taking care of the baby. I worked and took care of my kids and my ex-husband worked and took care of the kids. So, two people can work and take care of the child. It's just that simple. Just that simple. So, do what's best for you and what you feel will benefit you and your child's life in the long run. And make sure he get a damn job. He need to get his ass off the couch. Ugh, I can't even get it out. But anyway. So, yes. Real Talk Wednesday. Um, I do have 10 minutes left, but I'm going to just end it on two because I have my grandson over and I got to take care of him. And plus, I think I had enough to drink to where I can start feeling it. Um, so yeah, this stuff will get you nice and a little bit tipsy. And yes, <laughs> okay. So like I said, leave your information, not your information, but your opinions down below for Leah as well as King, what you feel in their situation. And as always, stay diva and divalicious. And I'll be back real soon with another Real Talk. So, yes, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Share the video. Share this video. Share all the videos. I will see you guys in my next video.